Welcome back to another episode of the Field of 68's College Basketball Offseason Grades. And today we are going to be breaking down the Arkansas Razorbacks, who basically built an entirely new basketball team in the offseason, as Eric Musselman is wont to do. I'm not even going to bother going through the guys that they lost. Just assume it was basically everyone. Who they have coming back? Devo Davis, a guy that was at one point an SEC preseason player of the year back in 2021. Trevon Brazil is back after tearing his ACL uh, about a third of the way through last season. Makai Mitchell, Jalen Graham, Joseph Pinion all return. What matters are the newcomers. They bring in Khalif Battle, who averaged 18 points at Temple. They bring in Tremont Mark, who averaged 10 points at Houston, really talented kid. Keon Menefield averaged 10 points and three assists as a freshman at Washington. Jeremiah Davenport and L. Ellis, who averaged 18 points uh, in what we would call a losing cause. At Louisville, as well as freshman Bay Fall and Layden Blocker, both of whom are top 30 prospects in the country. Goodman, what do you make of this Arkansas roster? <laughs> what do I make of them? I don't know. I mean, listen, <laughs> again, it, it, it's it's such a uh, changing of the guard. I mean, again, you, you had a team that was thrown together last year a little bit, right? Talent, super talented guys. Nick Smith came in with all this hope and promise, didn't really deliver whether it was due to injury or not, whatever. Um, Anthony Black was good. He goes number six in the draft. Um, you know, you, you got Jordan Walsh, who went to the Celtics in the second round, super athletic, can't really shoot. But they were, like, highly touted. Ricky Council had to really hold down the fort for the most part last year offensively. So they, they lost all their dudes for the most part. But they did bring back – Three key guys. I mean, honestly, you look at it in Devo Davis, Brazil, who didn't play much, but but is a key guy. Super talented. I think he could be a lottery pick. Uh, Devo's a veteran who can guard and has an in improved offensive game. And then you bring in all these transfers. The one thing I'll say, Rob, like they'll be good because all of Mus's teams, you know, are good come January, February. They're going to be good. But are they going to be great? Are they going to be capable of winning four straight games? I, I don't know just because, again, here, here's why. Brazil's not a great shooter. He actually shot it well when he was healthy last year, but he's not a great shooter. Devo Davis, not a great shooter. I don't know what he shot from three last year. Khalif Battle shot 35% from three last year at Temple. Um, the other five guys shot either 30, four guys who transferred in, shot either 32 or 33% from three. I just don't know if you can win at the highest level doing that, uh, especially throwing a bunch. Like San Diego State didn't have great shooters, but they had a team that was like built on continuity for the most part. They added a couple pieces. This well, is a continuity and being team. 27 years old, right? That helps too. Yeah. I mean, being Arkansas is older too. It's yeah, not like they they're young. They, you know, th those two young guys, like Bayfall, I saw him uh, last summer. He's, he's talented. Um, Laden Blocker is talented. I don't know how much you're going to be able to play over, over these older dudes. So, I, again, they're going to be good. I worry about their perimeter shooting more than anything else. Yeah, the, it's the perimeter shooting that is the big question mark. What I think is really interesting with this team, and by the way, they added so many guys. I forgot to mention that J Chandler Lawson also also could have been yeah. in the program as a transfer. Right. Like, that's how many dudes they got bringing in. I can't even remember one of the Lawson yeah. brothers is, uh, is, is committing to the program. Um, I... I, I think I like this group more than you do because I think that if you look at the the pieces and the way that Mus wants to play, like I can see how this can work, right? Yes, the shooting is a question. I think Khalif Battle is probably a better shooter than that 35% number would indicate. He shot eight threes per game last season. A lot of them were uh, tough off the dribble threes and made 35% of them. I think that had more to do with the shot selection than how he, good he is as a shooter, if that makes sense. I think Shaman Mark is a guy that can win one-on-one -on -one matchups. I think Devo Davis is that like junkyard dog defender. I think you got the stretch five in Trevon Brazil that you're looking for. And I think that you surround them with a couple guys that can be playmakers like L. Ellis and Kenyon Millenfield. Like, I see what Must is trying to do. Now, the question with this team, as is the question with every Must team, is like what they do in November is going to be totally different than what they're doing by the end of the season. Like Must finds a way to make it work. And I think there are enough talented players on this team that eventually he's going to find a way to make it work. Does that mean they are an eight seed that upsets a one? 
in the tournament like they did last year? Does that mean they are two seed that makes it to the Elite Eight? I don't know. At some point, though, he's going to figure out what the pieces that he has on his roster because when you go one to 13, I don't know how many teams have as talented of a group as one to 13 as Arkansas does this year. So eventually he's going to find a way to make this thing work. It's kind of where I stand. For you, is the X factor just the three-point shooting? Is that is it just as simple as that? Because I feel like for you, it's just as simple as that. Yeah, and chemistry. I mean, I, I think always when you bring in all these transfers, you, like you said, you're deep. You're deep. you got two freshmen that are top 30 players who, who knows how much they're going to play. I mean, both those kids are thinking they're one and done. And maybe they will be at the end of the day based on potential, but it's not going to be based on production. Let's face it. Um, This is going to be spread around. I don't think you're going to have a situation like last year where Ricky Council was the only guy who can make a play uh, with the ball in his hands because Nick Smith was out. And again, Anthony Black just wasn't quite ready. That's not his game anyway. Jordan Walsh can't do that. So I, I, I like the, again, I like the fact that you have a bunch of different dudes who can score on this team. I just ultimately, I would zone the hell out of them all day long. Yeah, you're probably right. I do think it's the shooting. I will just throw out the guy on this group who I think is the most talented player is Trevon Brazil. We saw him as a freshman show him. flashes at Missouri. We saw him last season. I mean, the dunk that he had in the preseason, I guess, I think it was North Texas. Uh, some of the shots that he made. In the Maui Invitational, like you could see how good that dude could end up being at 6'11, that athletic with a three point shot. If he ends up figuring it out, like that is a guy that is an all SEC caliber player just waiting to explode. I think Musk might be able to uh, unlock that this year. All right, let's set the expectation level for this group. I think if you were to poll most media members, there's going to be like a tier at the top of the SEC, right? In terms of what the expectation is for certain teams and Arkansas would be one of the five teams kind of at the top of those rankings. Right. Is that fair to say? What do you got? Arkansas. It would be Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, um, Texas A&M, Alabama. Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. You're probably right. And again, I I think for Arkansas, it's Obviously, don't write them off early. They need to get enough, like pick off enough teams in the in the in the non-conference. But they're going to be up and down. We know that, and it's it's getting in gear when it matters most and finishing strong. Going from where like they're like on the eight nine line at the end of January, even mm-hmm. mid to late January, and then they go on a run and they move up and they get a four seed or something like that uh, because they finish strong. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with them too. Um, I will just say that the SEC, uh, I think there's a lot of really good teams at the top. Yeah. Um, I throw Auburn and Florida into the mix of teams that I think have the potential to be like top 25-ish, win yeah. a game with you in the tournament. That's to say nothing of what Ole Miss could be if they get a couple guys eligible. Um, so I don't think it's outlandish to say like Arkansas can win an SEC regular season or SEC tournament title. It's just, it's going to have to, they're going to have to get lucky on a couple things and um, they're going to have a couple, have to have a couple guys come good, but the talent is there for them to be able to make some noise. All right, grade it, grade the off season. What do you, what, what do you, what do you make of what Must did this off season? Shuffle a lot of people out, shuffle a lot of people in. Yeah, I, I think you got to give it, you know, a pretty good grade. He went early. That's the one thing that he did. It was, it was really smart because we're seeing now with supply and demand. Like these guys go in the portal late, they get over recruited and. and even if they're not that great, they're going to get paid huge money. Must went all in early and, and just said like, all right, I'm going to get what I can as much as I can. And, and and he did. And I think he got some good pieces. I would probably give him a B plus. Yeah, I think I would be right about there. Um, B, B plus kind yeah. of a range. Um, I, I would have liked to have seen one shooter, one pure shooter. That's, that's where, to me, in the portal that that I, I don't think they did the best job of – and not learning from last year because they didn't have shooting last year. It's like the Calipari model in a way. Like, we've seen this for years with Cal. Finally, he got some shooters last year. But before that, it was like he never had wing shooters. And it's like, how many years are you going to do this? With Muss, I feel like the same thing. But, but you got to get a kid who's talented enough, too, to be able to get on the court. Like, they have the kid Pinion – 
or Pinon, whatever whatever his name is, who is like a top hundred player. It's not Pinon, I'll tell you that. All right, whatever it is, <laughs> I'm making him French. Um, Pinion, who can shoot it, but he can't really stay in the court just because he can't do enough else. So um, anyway, I, I'm just listen. I'm trying to keep up with you in terms of mispronunciations yeah. of players. That's no, I'm, I'm with you. I think I would set a lot of solid B for him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I would have liked to. The, the other thing right. is, I would have liked to see them. You know, I think you could have brought back one of Jordan Walsh or Ricky Council. That well, could they have, tried. They could have helped. I mean, they tried yeah. with Walsh, but yeah. he was okay with going in the second round. And I'm not sure he would have addressed the need that we're talking about, which is a shooter. A yeah, shooter. but it's all if you look at the best must teams, they've had just like a ridiculous athlete yep. that can play like three slash four that just yep. mucks it up. Yep. You know, that it was the the kid that transferred him from South Dakota a couple of years ago. Think about like the Jordan Carolines of the world when he was at Nevada. Like he just loves dudes like that. And I would have liked hey, to you know him. what the other thing we haven't talked about? What's that? This? Like who's gonna have the ball in their hands? Is it L. Ellis? Is he your like who's gonna be your point guard? I don't so the thing about what Musk does is he doesn't necessarily have like whoever brings the ball up doesn't matter. What they do is they run offense to try to find specific matchups that they can exploit. Sure. So I don't think I don't think having a point guard matters. I think you need guys like what must needs are people that can go win one on one, which is what. But Anthony Black made plays for his teammates. Who does yeah. that right now? On I think team? I think Menafield and I think L. Ellis have the potential to be able to do that, but there isn't really like a, a guy, a yeah. pure point guard. But like the, like I said, like you don't. I don't think that is a for a lot of teams that would be a deal breaker for me. For yeah. must teams, that's something where I think that they are good enough at scheming shots for and specific actions for players that it's a little less important. Like you didn't need that last year in the tournament because you could just call a play for Ricky Council. Like what the reason they beat Kansas, Jeff, because what they did was they got Ricky Council the ball at the top of the key. They had a, the five man set of screen and they got a switch. So they did whoever was the five man for Kansas was guarding Rich, Ricky Council and they just said go right and either pull up or get to the rim and they can't stop you and they couldn't stop him. And it was just as simple as that. So I think there are guys that can win that matchup. Listen, this has been an episode of the Field of 68's College Basketball Offseason Grades. We just broke down Arkansas. Jeff, the must bus continues rolling. Our partner for today's episode is Athletic Greens. I started taking AG1 during the college basketball season, and I loved the impact that it had on my energy levels. I'm a big coffee in the morning guy. But by the time that the afternoon would hit, I needed another boost. AG1 helped me tremendously, especially on those days when I didn't want to get up off the couch and go hit the gym. Their tagline is AG1 is comprehensive health and the power of habit in one. And man, that could not be more true. It's nearly impossible to eat and drink in a healthy manner in the month of February and the month of March when you are in my business. And AG1 was exactly the supplement that I needed to improve my gut health and cover my nutritional bases for the day. I've continued that into April. I've continued that into May, and I'm going to continue that the rest of the summer. All I have to do is mix a scoop of AG1 with some water or maybe add it into a smoothie and I'm ready to go. Do it after lunch and you'll be ready to go for the rest of the day. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com backslash field68. That's field68, F-I-E-L-D, the number six, the number eight, and you can get yours now. So check it out and help support this show. Thanks.